Hello Saxo fans, welcome back, episode 43. Now, before we get started on this episode, I want to pop a little clip in of Matt's car running. Um, if you remember, in the last episode, we walked away from it because it had a flat battery. Um, and Matt was going to go and get that sorted and then do a sort of dry crank and then pop some fuel in it. Uh, he did that and um, here is genuinely the first attempt at starting it on a new battery. There you go then. I mean, I'm pleased with that. Obviously, having done quite a bit of work on, on Matt's car and Matt's engine, uh, I'm really pleased that he's managed to, to start it first time. So now he can go and do all the things to get it back together and um, yeah, hopefully we'll see it on the road very, very soon. Slightly jealous because we started our cars at about the same time and he's beaten me to it. Anyway, today's episode is all about cooling. So I'm going to take it down to the front of the car and we'll have a little chat about what we need to do. Right, beautiful sunny day. So I've just opened the garage door so we can get a better view of the front end. So what I've done is just popped on the front end that I've got my hands on. Obviously I'm converting to a Mark 1 as you might know. But what we need to do is get the radiator in. Now, I've offered up the original radiator that came with the car, and the problem is it doesn't fit. Um, quite simply, the hole that it locates in is that hole there. It obviously then comes across, will then clash with the turbo, hot and cold side, um, and obviously the other mount points, you know, sort of just down there somewhere. So essentially the turbo is too far forward. So what I'm gonna do is move the radiator uh, forward to you know however much I need to to accommodate that the problem then is that some of these extra panels so part of the slam panel here part of the front car here front of the car here is in the way and the same same on this side um, and then obviously the mounting points won't line up um, so I'm gonna have to do a bit of cutting and fabricating I think to to figure something out so that's that's the first thing I think we'll do or one of the things that we'll do and also I'd like to get the oil cooler mounted. So I've got this cooler here, not actually brand new. I need to clean it up and repaint it and stuff, but essentially I can flush it out and it's, and it's good. Um, and obviously I've got the pipes already here. They're nice and long, so I can cut them back if I need to. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna put that in the, in a wing somewhere, essentially just behind the, the fog light cover so it can get some fresh air. Or depending on how much room I've got, I might stick it at the top here somewhere above above the intercooler which i haven't got yet but yeah we'll see i might make up the bracketry and put it over there and then if i decide to move it later i can do but um we'll see so before we go any further i'll just show you the radiators that i've got right then a little trio of radiators here on the bench so obviously original saxo mark ii vts rads pretty standard stuff i think it's a little 30 mil core maybe slightly less than that plastic um, header tank already built in. Behind that is an eBay special from China. Um, that's massive, it's a 56 mil core. Obviously same inbuilt header tank as the original one, would fit you know, the standard location. Um, and then behind that is actually a, an ST150 uh, Fiesta rad from Direnza, uh, 40 mil core. So, Essentially, I've bought these because I've got a problem. And um, what I want to do is just show you that issue now and the reason why this one can't be used. Well, it could, but obviously I'd have to chop it up a bit. But why this one is going to be a better option. Right, now bear with me on this section. I'm going to offer the three radiators up in the space and talk to you about the issue. So let's just go with the original one, standard rad. So the mounting positions are obviously just you know where the turbo is so for me to get this in i'd have to i'm using the original mounts not only would i have to chop a bit of the panel here obviously it's going to clash with the turbo and the angle's all wrong and i'd have to modify the scuttle so this clearly isn't going to work next up we'll offer up the ebay china special so this one if i didn't have a turbo just offering it an, as a direct replacement for a, you know, an original radiator, it'd fit an absolute treat. But the problem is, obviously I've still got the same 
depth problem here. The whole thing's going to have to move forward. Um, and the problem really is around these end tanks because obviously it replaces the, the plastic tank on there of aluminium and they're so chunky. And because I'm moving all of that forward, the slum panel comes around here. I'm going to have to essentially cut a load of the slum panel out and critically all of the bit that sort of mounts the headlight. So, and that's just down to this. So essentially the rad is great. I'm sort of happy with it. Um, and you know, the positions line up in terms of the hoses, not too bad. Um, I could modify the bottom hose down here to sort of suit the, where the, the feed comes from, but I really don't want to cut the scuttle too much, which is why I picked the third rad and let's go through that one. Right, and then finally, the Dorenza Fiesta ST150 rad. So if I pop this roughly into position, just being careful not to bend any of the fins on this one. So the good thing about this is that it doesn't have any uh, tanks on the side. Um, the pipe work is roughly right, so the coolant pipe here will have to be shortened a little bit to account for the intake, so the exit rather. The pipe down here points in the wrong direction, so that needs a 90 on it. But that's, that's fine, that's easy to resolve. The mounting position is pretty good. Obviously I can get it you know, as close as I need to get it to the turbo um, and it will fit in the aperture where the, the standard fan was, which is great. So I think this is like a really tidy solution. Obviously it needs a little bit of modification, but the biggest thing really is that it needs to run a separate header tank because the other two, as you saw, had tanks built, built in. So again, Steve sorted me out with this. He's a fountain of knowledge. But you'll notice here, the eagle-eyed among you, little Shreddy's box, what I've done is just mock up a little design for a header tank to sit on the inner wing here. Uh, and then what I'll do is feed into my little piece down on the inner wing in the arch uh, where I've secured it, a little aluminium piece. So I'll probably run an AN10 line out of here and, and fix it down there. And then I've obviously got the, the return breather little pipe, so a little stubby pipe that will come over here and we'll go over to this little pipe here. So that I feel like that's going to work. Obviously it's going to be a load of fabrication, a load of messing about, but by far and away the least amount of cutting of the vehicle, which is desirable I think. So um, yeah, that's going to work. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll get everything else sort of mocked up in the rough area and then um, we'll see what it looks like sort of roughly fitted and we'll calculate what needs to happen with some of these pipes and stuff. Right, first modification to make then, just offering the scuttle panel up, is this little flap on the inside there. Not entirely sure what it does, maybe just stops the original radiator moving, but yeah, that's in the way. So I think the first thing to do is just cut this off. I don't think it's going to serve any purpose for us at all. So let's go and get the angle grinder out and cut that off. Okay, with that bit of the scuttle moved out of the way, got a couple of little issues now then. So essentially, obviously, because this is meant for a Fiesta, there's brackets and things on it that are slightly in the way. So these stubs here are probably just a bit long. I'd like to keep a little bit of them because it's always good to be able to mount it somewhere. There's another little bracket just behind it, which just needs to come off completely. Uh, and then the same, the same that side too. So. I'll take the radiator out now and just modify those two little bits and that'll allow it then to move forward off the turbo.
Right, that's Axo fans. So, two little 90 degree brackets there with the rubber bungs in, riveted to the original body bit. <clears throat> and then all I've done to mount the top is just to knock up a little 90 degree bracket. I put a little thread, uh, drilled a hole, threaded it into that boss that I cut off. Obviously now that's got a little M6 cap head in there. And then thankfully there was a little bolt position here. I think this is where the power steering bolts do. And it still can do, obviously power steering can go on that with that bracket. And that essentially just stops it coming forward. So the only movement in this now is because I haven't bolted it to the wings. But in terms of clearance, we are, we have air gap, which is decent. Uh, and then I guess the only other thing to note is the rake of this. So the radiator is, you can just see it there, sort of ever so slightly tilted backwards. So anyway, I'm happy with that. So the next thing to do is whip it all out, send this over to be modified, and I'll talk about that when it comes back. Uh, get this bit cut off. I need to shorten this hose. So the hose is, you know, so close, but basically I'm probably just gonna cut some of the Spooks logo out and put a joiner in there. That'll sort that bit out. That bit there, obviously, get a 90 on it, T into there, jobs are good. Un. And then obviously, it's just get this header tank made up, which I've also go into the same place where the radiator's going. Anyway, so that, that's like a significant headache that's out of the way, done and dusted. So, um, and forgive the slam panel. Obviously, this is how I got it, and obviously, it will all be cleaned up and sorted, but I knew that it. It was going to get messed around with it to some degree, which is hence why it's in such a state. But obviously it will be done. So now that's all done, let's focus our attention on the oil cooler, which is just down there. Right, well, just before we move on to the little oil cooler, I wanted to test this fan that I've got. So this is a SPAL 12 inch fan. I was actually given this as part of a package deal for some other stuff. So I've actually never tested it, don't know if it works, but just coincides that if I pop this in position, it is a millimeter perfect. So I will use it. And assuming it works okay, um, I'll still be able to get maybe another one in here. I'd like to have two ideally, one for sort of like if it's in traffic and yeah, things are warming up, maybe I could switch that one on as well. But let's check this one. So I've already dialed in my little um, uh, voltage um, box down here to 12 volts. So let's give it a go. It's on. That was at 12.2 volts, pulling nine amps. So yeah, it's good size, perfect fit. I'll get a mount kit for this, and that's now also gonna determine where I can start my intercooler from, so I can measure up now and, and get that ordered as well. Right, onto oil cooler. Right then, Saxo fans, so I did have, I've just jumped ahead a little bit. Just, uh, I didn't wanna show you the doing of the oil cooler, just be, because it's a bit boring, essentially you've seen it all before, just making brackets. But what I've done, as you can see, mounted it on the inner wing here, um, just off a couple of aluminium spacers, just to bring it away from the body a little bit. Um, yeah, it's nice and secure. I need to get a different hose for this because it's all the wrong angle. So I'll probably get a nice little 180 in there. This one can stay as it is. And then it's just a matter of clipping up the, the feed and return lines to it. So uh, yeah, pleased with that. Pretty straightforward in the end, quite simple. Few rivnuts, nuts, nice and easy. I'll take all that off now and give it a good clean up, but essentially it's done. So the next thing to do is other than get my radiator back from being modified by the uh, welding place, which I'll talk about when they do come back, I have also got this. So intercooler, um, it's a two and a half inch outlet it's a 450 mil intercooler. I can't remember how high it is. Um, yeah, I need to get that mounted. I've got an idea of how I'm gonna do it, but I need the radiator and the fan in place. 
before I do that we are going to have to chop quite a lot of the bumper out because obviously everything's come forward a bit um, but yeah anyway so what we'll do is we'll get the get the radiators back I'll show you what we're going to do with those I've got a bit a bit of stuff modified we'll get all that hooked up and then we'll think about intercooler okay then Saxo fans so the radiators back I've already put it all in no need to show you that you've seen it going in and out a few times already but quick overview then so my cardboard template is now an aluminium tank this is rubber mounted underneath just bolted into the arch there on a couple of rib nuts and then I run an AN10 line here down underneath the arch and then that goes bear with me to that there so that allows me to feed in essentially fill up the system from there and then the overflow stub whoops it easy was here is now here and will link up to here so I need to get a little tube for that it's the only thing I haven't ordered yet um, and then also had made up a little stub to shorten this because this was about an inch and a half, two inches too long with this stub. So now I've got a join in that pipe. Uh, I'm probably going to change all these clips for Michelor clips, but this is just what I've got around me at the time. So I just wanted to get it all mocked up. Um, what else? Oh, yeah. So the stub down there is now at 90 degrees, tees into the original pipe nicely. And just above that, the AN6. Uh, water return pipe which is still too long I haven't trimmed that back yet but yeah that's all good so that's working a treat so jobs are good and on that so now then what we'll do is we'll have a look at the intercooler I think I've got a bit of a plan as to what we're going to do right so the intercooler now can be set now I've got the fan in position it's all held in with its proper pins so I'm obviously going to sit just in front of it. I'll leave a little bit of a gap. But what I'm going to do is mount off here and off here up to where the bonnet catch is because I can't run the bonnet catch now because the radiator behind here is, is in the way. So I'm going to have to go to bonnet pins, which will be over there. I'm going to get rid of this. So I'm going to tee off, oops, <coughs> tee off here and here with a bit, a bit of bar and some strengthening. And I'll do the same from underneath from this, this cross member essentially holding it in in four different positions so I'm just waiting on some material to turn up so I can do that and then it's all about pipe work which is going to be yeah that's going to be a real headache all the uh, air pipes for intercooler and throttle and out of the turbo and all that kind of stuff that's going to be a bit of a game but I think that's probably for the next episode now and so I'm just waiting for some material to turn up and then we can do that so yeah probably call it a day there I think Took a little bit longer this episode than what I would have liked because when I got married, didn't I? Had a little honeymoon. Yeah, and I've been busy with some plating work as well. So um, yeah, a little bit slower than what we would have expected. But anyway, we've made some progress. So um, we'll do the intercooler in the next episode and we'll look at some boost pipes and stuff. So anyway, see you then.